Hey guys, we're on topic seven, genetics and biotech regions review questions. Number one says the photographs to the right are of two Siamese cats. The Siamese breeds has a gene that controls fur color. The cat in the first photograph was kept indoors while the cat in the second photograph was kept outdoors. Which statement best explains the differences in fur color between these two cats? So as you can see, one of them has a lot more black pigmentation around their face, which was the one that was outdoors. The one indoors is um, pretty much all white. And what you have to think is what would cause this. So they're in different environments, right? One's outside, one's inside. Number one says the cat kept indoors is older than the cat kept outdoors. I don't know exactly what effect that would have on the skin color. Um, Oh, sorry, the fur color. I guess you could think it's old, so it turned white, but that's not what happened. Um, number two says the environment influenced the expression of genes. Remember, genes get turned on and off um, due to different environmental factors. Think about identical twins, for example. They can look very, very similar. Um, one of them could develop the cancer, let's say, and the other one doesn't. Why is that? That's because different genes are activated. Think about if you leave a hose on the grass um, the sun can't actually go and hit that grass then, and then the chlorophyll winds up breaking down, can't undergo photosynthesis, um, so it changes color. Again, that's an environmental factor. Um, number three says the environment influences the production of all proteins that in the cat kept outdoors. No, that's not correct. And again, it's sometimes it's just a little fine tuning of the wording. It says all the proteins, so that's not going to be correct. And the cat kept in outdoors has a gene mutation that prevents it from producing light colored fur. Well, if I look at the outdoor cat, I actually see that it has quite a bit of light colored fur, so that's not correct. The correct answer choice there is going to be two. That's talking about gene expression and how genes are turned on or off or activated. Um, number two says, although all of the cells of a plant contain the same genetic information, root cells and leaf cells are not identical because they. So this is saying, if even if you look at the same plant, right, these cells might not be identical. You can even apply this to humans. If you look at an eye cell and a stomach cell, they all have the same exact genetic information, but they do different things. Why? Why are they capable of doing different things? And that's going to be because of two. They use different parts of the genetic instruction. This is just on the reproduction section as well. Remember, using different parts of the genetic code is called differentiation. A gene, sorry, a sequence of events is represented in the diagram below. Which statement best describes a result of this process? So looking here, they have a spider. They've removed DNA from the spider. Now, not all the DNA. They most likely just were able to remove one gene. Remember, that gene is going to be coding for a specific protein. They put that DNA from a spider into the DNA of a goat. Now this goat is able to produce a new protein. Spider silk proteins in goat milk. So spider silk proteins. And again, where did they get that from? This section or segment of DNA, which is called gene. Number one for that says the spider from which the DNA sample was obtained can no longer produce spider milk. Well, they took a gene from just one cell of the spider. That spider's still alive. They didn't have to kill that spider. So that's not correct. Um, number two says the goat milk now contains DNA molecules made of spider silk proteins. No, the goat milk is still coded for by the goat's DNA. So that's not correct. Both the spider and the goat now produce both spider silk and goat milk. That's not correct because all that's happened is that they've inserted this gene into the goat and now the goat can make spider silk. They haven't done anything to the spider other than removed one gene from one cell. Last one says spider silk proteins can now be produced in large quantities without killing spiders to obtain them. And that's correct, right? Because you're able to find those spider silk proteins inside of the goat milk. So all you have to do is milk the goat and then you have your spider silk. It's going to be four. And also remember something I didn't mention. This is an example of genetic engineering.
which I think is a topic many of us struggled with. So we're going to go over that again in a couple of questions. State one way scientists could use the banding patterns produced from gel electrophoresis. So we have banding, then we have gel electrophoresis. Remember, gel electrophoresis is when you can compare DNA of two organisms. That's what they are talking about when they say banding. Different ways you can use this could be paternity. You could use this for a crime scene investigation. Um, medical testing. Ever do Ancestry.com? They also can use this for evolutionary relationships, so how closely related are two organisms. Which statement is an accurate description of genes? So here are the genes. Remember, genes are segments of DNA. Remember, DNA is going to code for proteins. Number one says proteins are made of genes and code for DNA. No. Genes, right, are part of DNA and they code for proteins. Genes are made of proteins. No, that's not correct. Um, because genes code for proteins. They are not made of proteins. Number three says DNA is made of carbohydrates. Definitely incorrect, right? DNA is made up of genes and that's going to code for a protein. Last one says genes are made out of DNA and they code for proteins. That is going to be correct. Again, genes are segments of DNA. Flip over. The table below represents a segment of DNA, referred to as a gene, molecule found in a stomach, both before and after undergoing replication. Which statement best describes a change that would most likely be observed in the cells formed as a result of mitotic cell division. So here before and after, what they want you to do is they want you to go through and see if there are any changes. That codon looks the same. This one here though, but you'll notice that there's a change in the codon, right? This one letter here, same, same, same. And then here, there's also a change. So there are two changes. If you have changes in the DNA code, right, new DNA code, also known as a mutation, then you're probably going to be wind up making a new protein. Think back to that codon chart. If we go and analyze this on the codon chart, a new amino acid is going to be present. If a new amino acid is present, that means that the twisting and folding and the shape of the protein is going to change. So therefore, its job is also going to change. Number one says an enzyme that the cell produces might no longer function. Remember an enzyme, and they'll do this frequently, they use the word enzyme, as a replacement for protein, because they're thinking you should remember that an enzyme is a specific type of protein. So an enzyme the cell produces might no longer function. Well, if you have a new protein, it'll have a new shape, and then if it has a new shape, it'll have a new function. So it will not work the way that it's intended to. So number one is probably the best answer. But if I keep going, the cells would begin to form gametes to be released. That doesn't really make any sense. Number three says many new hormones would be synthesized by the cell. Well, the code, right, this is just one gene. They're not going to make a ton of new hormones. And if anything, they'd be improperly shaped, so they wouldn't work properly. And then chloroplasts would be produced by the ribosomes. This does not mention anywhere something about chloroplast or ribosomes. We'll cross that one off. The diagram below represents portions of two genes that code for leaf structures in the same species of clover. Gene 1 was taken from the cells of a clover plant with three leaves, and gene 2 was taken from the cells of a clover plant with four leaves. The clover plant having gene 2, four leaves, was most likely the result of. So looking here, look at the code, G-A-T-T-C, G-A-A, TTC. So actually what wound up happening was that there looks like there's some sort of addition. Now here, there's nowhere it doesn't say addition, but it does use the word insertion. Right? If you insert it, you've added it. So that's going to be number one. Eight, the diagram below represents some steps in a procedure used in the field of biotechnology. The bacterial cell can now be used to produce what? Again, remember, this is a picture of genetic engineering. 
This is actually a pretty common picture, so you should be familiar with it. Again, on the test, make sure you're labeling these things so that you actually know what's going on in the picture. Here, it tells me this is a gene for human insulin. Remember, human insulin is a type of hormone. That hormone is needed by diabetics. What they've done is they've taken the bacterial DNA and they've cut it. I don't know if you guys remember, but in order to cut the DNA, they are going to use enzymes. Same thing here, they tell you, hey, we've actually pasted them back together. So DNA is used to cut and then to paste the DNA back together. Looking here, I have my human gene that's been inserted into my bacterial DNA. And then what they do is they take that new piece of DNA that they've just made and they have their bacterial DNA and then the human gene. That's just one gene inside of there. So this contains human gene to make insulin. That means every bacterial cell that comes from this guy here is going to have the capability of making insulin. So let's read through the answers. Number one says the bacterial gene for insulin that can be inserted into humans. No, it doesn't have any, bacteria don't have the ability naturally to make insulin. So that's not true. Number two says human genes for enzymes that can be inserted into humans. This insulin here is not an enzyme, it's an example of a hormone. That's not right. Insulin that can be used by humans. Well, we just said, this guy here is going to be capable of making insulin because he has the gene responsible. And then last one says, enzymes necessary to treat human diseases. No, again, it's a type of hormone. So that's not going to be right. Best answer choice there is three. Follow the picture. Use the captions in order to assist you. The instructions for genetic traits of an organism are directly determined by. When we're talking about genetic traits, we're talking about DNA. Correct answer choice here is going to be one, sequence of bases. Sequence means order. Bases are talking about A, T, C, and G. They're trying to throw you off with number one because it says A, T, C, and G, but it says units in a sugar molecule. That should really be DNA molecule. Um, three says length of the DNA molecule. That doesn't determine your instructions. So, way the bases are paired in two strands of the DNA. No, they should have their complementary strands. Best answer choice there is going to be two. So the, the basic building blocks of a protein, this is, should be straightforward, building blocks of proteins are going to be amino acids. Um, in a cell, where does protein synthesis take place? Remember rib, we're talking about proteins being made, that's going to be one. Mitochondria is talking about respiration, so you can cross that one off. Chloroplast is talking about photosynthesis, cross that one off. Vacuole is talking about storage. Last couple on the next page. The diagram below represents a process that occurs in living cells and on your knowledge of biology. The process shown in the diagram is, again, before you even look at this, analyze the picture. Here, this is a structure, messenger RNA. Remember, messenger RNA brings the code to the ribosome. These guys here are supposed to be tRNA, although it's not labeled. These glycine, proline, alanine, those are all examples of amino acids. And finally, the newly formed molecule is supposed to be a protein. So the process shown in the diagram is going to be protein synthesis. I think when we were going over this, a lot of people picked three because they realized that those were genes. Gene recombination really means fertilization. Fertilization is not occurring here. This says structure X. Again, it's really important for you to analyze the diagrams before you move on with the questions. The English Bulldog is extinct. To produce a new English Bulldog, dogs having the desired physical characteristics but not the aggressive nature of the old were mated. Right? Mated means they reproduced. The result was a bulldog that was similar in appearance to the extinct bulldog but without its fierce nature. Which technique is most likely used to develop this new variety of dog? Number one says cloning. Nope. 
cloning would make an exact copy. In the reading, they said it's not as aggressive. The mutation, mutation is talking about change in code. Nowhere here did they say anything about the A, T, C, or G changing. Genetic engineering would mean that they've actually inserted a gene, right, like biotechnology. Mating is natural. So what, what did they do? They found two organisms that had the desired traits that they liked. They made them mate, and then the offspring they hoped had the characteristics that they were looking for. That's what selective breeding is. Last one, caretakers at a zoo are trying to determine which of the two male tigers fathered the newest cub. They obtained DNA from the tiger cub, the mother cub, and the two male tigers. The DNA was analyzed. The results are shown below. This technique used to separate DNA for analysis is, so separating DNA, that's going to be electrophoresis. Other things to note on this, although they're not asking, but it's still good for review, is let's say this is my start. I think where are the small molecules, where are the large molecules? Remember the small molecules? I always say that they are going to be swift, so they're able to make it far. The ones that are closer to the top, let's say like the one in the cub there, those are large. Large ones lag. They're really slow. They can't make it as fast. They can't, sorry, they can't make it as far. Another type of question that you'll see is why does it move out of the wells? Remember, DNA has a negative charge to it. Since DNA has a negative charge, it's attracted to the positive side. When they ask why is it coming out, that has to do with the electric current. The electric current, it, the DNA is attracted to the positive side when you go and plug that in. The only other question they'll say is who is it most close to two, male one or two, and for that you have to match up the bands. Once you have that and you've checked all of your answers, again, go through how many did you know, how many did you not know. What areas or vocabulary do you think you need to study? What diagrams are giving you a hard time? And then are there any words that you're not really familiar with? Go back, put those on the first page so that you could review those.